This is the Ultra Running History Podcast. I'm your host, Davey Crockett. Thanks. Thanks for coming. This is episode 167. In this episode, I will share the running career of the newest inductee into the American Ultra Running Hall of Fame, Connie Gardner of Ohio, who joined the hall in November 2024. There are now 11 books in the Ultra Running History series available on Amazon covering about 200 years of fascinating history of men and women who dared to go ultra distances when the public thought they were crazy. Learn about their adventures and accomplishments. On Amazon, search for Ultra Running History. If you want to buy multiple books, contact me for a discount on ultrarunninghistory.com. Standing in the Hall of Fame And the world gonna know your name Cause you burn with the brightest flame And the world's gonna know your name And you'll be on the walls of the Hall of Fame Connie Gardner from Akron, Ohio, is the 25th person inducted into the American Ultra Running Hall of Fame. From 2002 to 2012, she was a national champion 11 times at 50 miles, 100 kilometers, 100 miles, and 24 hours. She has finished at least 180 ultras, with more than 80% of them on trails with nearly 100 wins, including three wins at the prestigious JFK 50 in Maryland. During her ultra career, she established 37 course or event records. She was a member of the U.S. National 100K and 24-hour teams for many years, competing in many world championships. With a busy family life and children, she didn't start running ultras until her late 30s, but dominated into her 50s. She was named the USA Track and Field, USATF, Ultra Runner of the Year in 2003 and 2012, and the USATF Masters Ultra Runner of the Year in 2011. Connie was born in Washington, D.C. Her father was an electrical engineer and president of Kettering University in Flint, Michigan. He worked with the National Academy of Sciences in Washington, D.C., where Connie went to elementary school. Even as a child, she was always competitive, trying to reach for lofty goals. My brothers and I, and even a cousin, we were always trying to get in the Guinness Book of World Records. So everything we did was you try to fly a kite for three days. You tried to play war for as many days as we could. And then elementary school field day, I wasn't good at anything. So they put the people that aren't good at anything in the distance run. And I wasn't very good at that either. She believed she was a good kid, but got in trouble often with her teachers and sometimes experienced the paddle. She would often run before school to help her focus. In high school, Connie competed in the girls' cross-country and track teams. She won all conference honors running on the 4x800 meter relay team. Her team finished runner-up at the state finals in 1980 and 1981. I was so focused on running, my crowd in high school was just my cross-country team. So I didn't get in any trouble. There was no drinking. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you know, we're not going to botch up our chance to win state. And so that started at a young age. I think that kept me on a, a, good, a nice path. Connie attended the University of Massachusetts, where she received a Bachelor's of Science degree in sports management. While a freshman at age 17, she ran her first marathon at the 1981 Columbus Marathon and finished in 4:11. At UMass, she was on the eight-person rowing team for three years, but continued running. She would run six miles to and from the boathouse. 
She ran a lot of 5Ks and 10Ks during the 1980s and a marathon in the fall and in the spring. In 1987, she married Bob Gardner in Massachusetts. They would have two daughters, Abby and Gwen. Connie moved to Portland, Oregon to attend graduate school. To earn money, she became a bicycle messenger. That unique job helped get her into top physical shape, and she started to run with running groups. As the groups noticed that she would not get tired, she learned about ultramarathons. But with moving around and raising children, years passed before she seriously considered running an ultra. She finally settled in Medina, Ohio, where she worked for country clubs and health clubs and eventually became a full-time mom. She read about Western States 100 and thought she would like to experience running through the mountains. She set a goal to run Western States by the time she reached 40 years old, when her life would be less busy. After running marathons for 20 years, with times close to 3 hours, she ran her first ultra at the age 36 in 2000 at Groundhog Fall 50K in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. She finished in third place with 528. Next, she wanted to try a 50-miler and found one in Kentucky on trails. She said, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I was passing a lot of people between mile 20 and mile 30 to 35, and then I came up on this guy at about mile 35 and I asked, who's up ahead? And he answered, it's just us, we had about 15 miles to go. Her only remaining competitor didn't want to be beaten by her and pushed ahead for the win, but she was a close second overall, finishing in 8.53. She continued to run on average a road marathon a month for training. In 2001, Connie won all the ultras that she finished. She won her first 100-miler, the Mohican Trail 100 in Ohio, in 19 hours, 36 minutes. In the years to come, she would go on to win Mohican Trail 100 six times. Returning home after her first 100-mile finish and victory, she kept it quiet, not wanting her local friends to know that she was crazy enough to run 100 miles. She was never a self-promoter about her running accomplishments. Wanting to try to break 18 hours in a 100-mile race, she ran in the 2001 Umstead 100. At about mile 60, she started to think that just finishing would be a reasonable goal. She caught up with another runner, and as they chatted, she stopped thinking about her time. She was shocked when they finished together in 17 hours, 21 minutes. She won and broke the course record by more than 40 minutes. At the age of 39, in 2002, Connie reached her goal to run Western States 100. She recalled, At mile 99, I was running with my pacer and handler. We were very excited about finally finishing. We started to run harder, and I guess we stopped paying attention to the course. We got lost with a half mile to go. We eventually made it back to the course and to the finish. It's not much fun getting lost at mile 99, but at least I was in good company. She finished in 10th place with 23 hours 30 minutes and would go on to finish Western States five times. Nearly all of her ultras thus far had been on trails, but with all her marathon experience, she certainly knew how to hold the pace on the roads. In 2002, a friend told her about the Edmund Fitzgerald 100K held near Duluth, Minnesota, and that the top three finishers would earn spots on the U.S. National 100K team to compete at the World 100K Challenge the following year at Taipei, Taiwan. It was also the 100K National Championship. I've always enjoyed running, and the chance to make the U.S. Ultramarathon team made it all the more appealing to me. It sounded like it could be a lot of fun. So I said, why not? Gardner was somewhat of an unknown on the road ultra scene and surprised many people when she pulled away with 30k to go and went on to win in 8 hours 30 minutes, winning her first national championship. Her splits were incredibly even, with 414 for the first 50k and 416 for the second. During the next month in 2002, She went to run the oldest and largest ultra in America, the JFK 50 in Maryland, with 862 finishers. 
again. She was the surprising winner in 7 hours, 11 minutes, and 17th overall. I wanted this win badly. This is such a big race. It looked like there was a decent field out here today, so I was really nervous. It would be the first of her three wins at JFK 50. Her second of at least 29 100-miler wins was at the 2002 Umstead 100 in Raleigh, North Carolina, where she ran away from the women's field and set the first of her eight 100-mile course records with 17 hours, 21 minutes. In 2003, Connie added a 100-mile national championship to her 100K championship by winning the Olander Park 100 in her home state of Ohio, setting another 100-mile course record of 16 hours, 22 minutes on the 1.1-mile road loop with 93 runners. It was reported, Connie, with her capable 7- and 11-year-old daughters crewing, led from the start to the finish. She won by seven miles. It was the fastest 100 miles run by a woman in the U.S. during 2003. That year, she received the Ruth Anderson Award as USATF's 2003 Female Ultra Runner of the Year. In 2004, she set her lifetime 100-mile personal best, winning at Olander Park 100 again, repeating as the national 100-mile champ with 15 hours, 48 minutes, and again with the fastest American women's 100-mile time that year. In 2006, she would become the 100-mile trail national champion, winning Rocky Raccoon 100 in 17 hours and 4 minutes. The thing that's nice about it is you're moving forward. So when I was going through a divorce, I would go for a run or go race, go race 100 and win it. And I thought, okay, that gave me a ton of confidence. And I moved forward and I accomplished something. And then the next week, I felt great. It's like, okay, I, I can figure out how to pay these bills. Like, I, I, if I could run 100 miles on Saturday, I think I can do this this next week. In 2006, Connie was interested to try going beyond 100 miles by competing in a 24-hour race. You got me going in some Her first 24-hour race attempt was at the 2006 ultra-centric 24-hour run. She finished in third place with an impressive 132.7 miles. That earned her a spot on the U.S. national 24-hour team. In explaining running for 24 hours, she said, You just have to make your body keep on going. You have to turn your body into a machine. It's a different kind of experience. It's really strange what you can make your body do. Connie set her sights on breaking Sue Ellen Trapp's long-standing 24-hour road record of 145.288 miles set in 1993. A running coach pointed out that all she needed to do was run a 10K each hour for 24 hours to break the record. The 2007 ultra-centric 24-hour run in Grapevine, Texas was offering $12,000 in prize money the largest purse for any American ultra probably since the Race Across America, Bunyan Derby, in 1929. It also would be the race to select members for the 2008 National 24-Hour Team. Connie was told that if she exceeded 140 miles, she would win $4,000. If she got the American record, she would win $10,000. As a single mom needing money to support her family, she paid the entrance fee on a credit card and went off to Texas. It was hot and humid during the race. She started to fall apart but pulled it together to run hard for the last four hours. For the last hour, they ran on a quarter-mile loop. And the race director's standing there and he's like, Well, this is Connie Gardner. She's about to do it. She's going to get a new American record. Just five more laps. Just four more laps. Just three more laps. Two more laps of American mm -hmm. records. So then... I just kick it around, one more lap, I cross the line, and there's a chair there, and I think, okay, I did it. I got my American <laughs> record, 10 grand, this is great, I sit down in the chair. Four hours after that, we go to awards, he says, hey, Connie, I hate to break it to you, but the American record is 145.28, and you ran 145.26. We remeasured, 
Then he gives me one of those big fake checks, you know, oh big cardboard God. things for four thousand dollars to win it. And then also I'm waiting, 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 and I never go to 4K. Later I was thinking I probably had their record. All I wanted, I just wanted to get the American record because I knew I could. I probably didn't get it because he didn't want to pay the money. Yeah. It was a great disappointment to miss the record by 49 yards, but it did not kill her desire to break the American 24-hour record, and probably actually broke the record that day. She was crowned the 2007 24-hour national champion. Over the next five years, Connie tried to break the 24-hour record eight times with no luck, but she did win five of those events with two more 24-hour national championships as she established herself as one of the best 24-hour runners in the country. She said if she could just get the record, she wouldn't have to run in circles again. At the 2011 North Coast 24-hour race in Cleveland, Ohio, she had another near miss, reaching 144.7 miles. She kept trying because she was convinced that she could reach 150 miles. At the 2012 24-hour World Championships at Poland, Connie, age 48, was convinced that she could break the record. The American record had recently been raised to 147.9 miles by Sabrina Moran of Texas. The Polish course was a nearly one-mile rectangular, nearly flat road loop around a pond in a beautiful park. Half of the loop was a brick surface, with the rest asphalt. There were 244 runners, including 95 women. Both the world record holder for the men and the women were in the race. Connie wasn't one to keep meticulous track of her pace or where she stood in the standings. She would pass the leaderboard after each lap, but the display was so close to the timing mat that her name would not appear until after she passed it. Runners would leave the track and come back, and she didn't know their positions. She asked her team managers just to tell her where she was at 8 hours and 16 hours. At that point, she asked where she was. They just looked at me like I was speaking a different language. After a few laps of asking for updates, I yelled, where am I? And they looked at me and yelled back, Poland. She wished that she had her special needs daughter there crewing her. The team managers were concentrating on the men running in the race, including Mike Morton, who would go on to break the men's American 24-hour record. It felt like Connie was having a perfect race. She knew she was passing some good runners, but she did not have any good feedback on her progress in the huge field. She had lost track of the leading woman from the Czech Republic and didn't realize that she was not very far ahead within catching distance. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero! But all of a sudden the horn goes off, I'm on the ground. And then I'm laying there, and then the team from Great Britain was like, hey, you got to go over to awards. And they helped me up and bring me over to, like, podium or whatever. But then I had to go get drug tested. You have to pee in a cup. So I'm sitting in there for hours with somebody that doesn't speak English. Then by the time I get back to the dorms, my friend's boyfriend is like, Hey, Connie, I think you got the American record. She broke the American 24-hour record with 149.368 miles and finished in second place. She thought they were joking, but it was true. If she had known her exact miles during the later stages of the race, she would have run much harder and passed 150 miles. But she finally had the record she had worked hard to beat. She also won the individual silver medal and helped her American team win the gold medal at the World Championships. Connie moved on to new goals. I've always thought I should be able to run 150 miles in a day, like, 100, like right that 150, 155 range. I should be able to do that sometime. And uh, if, if I do get into that range, then I'll be ha I think I'll be happy with that performance. But as far as trying to beat someone, or to, it's not about that. And I'm not doing it to be a millionaire because you're not going to make any money at it. And I really don't care if anyone even knows if I were to get it. It's, it would be like... I did. <laughs> I thought I could do that. But I actually wouldn't even want anybody to know because then you would, they'd, start, they'd say, how long have you tried to do that? And I thought, oh. 
about 40 years. <laughs> She would run in nearly 20 more 24-hour races, but as age took over, she never reached 150 miles. In 2013, Sabrina Moran, 23 years younger than Connie, got the American record back, raising it to 152.03 miles in the Netherlands. Connie's winning waves continued in other ultra distances, with at least 36 wins from 2006 to 2012. Of note, she established new course records at Umstead 100, Laurel Highland 70, and Burning River 100. I'm really competitive by nature. Unfortunately, my best distance is 100 miles. If I was really good at the 5K, I'd be doing 5K. The longer the distance, the better I do. I don't think I'm that much of a freak. I'm competitive because of my personality. Connie also experienced very long adventure runs and races. For years, she expressed the desire to run the very hot Badwater 134 in Death Valley. She got her chance in 2010 and finished in second place with 30 hours and 35 minutes. She ran across Ohio in 2012 and in 2016 ran across New Jersey south to north and it was featured in the movie Running the 184. I think it's remarkable that she would take the time to see somebody else's goal because this wasn't her goal and travel from Ohio to New Jersey to get this done. So to me, I think she's a remarkable woman in herself. In 2015, she finished Spartathlon in Greece in 15th place with 35 hours, 10 minutes. That year with Jen Shelton, she ran down into the Grand Canyon and back with Lance Armstrong. The story was featured in Trail Runner magazine. Entering her 50s, Connie did not ease back on the number of ultras she ran, still averaging about one a month, and the wins continued to pile up as younger runners tried fruitlessly to keep up with her. She set several ultra running age group records. Her last wins came in 2019. During that year, she experienced for the first time running in a six-day race in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where she won with 420.2 miles. She ran further than the best distance that was established by the 19th century women when the race was the most popular race among ultra runners. During the pandemic in 2020, she managed to run 100 miles in 17 hours 50 minutes at the age of 56 establishing an American 55 to 59 age group record for 100 miles. During her ultra running career, she finished at least 80 races of 100 miles or more. Running can help you balance your life. It, 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 that's what it should be. It, it should help you balance your life. It shouldn't be all about running or all about this, but it, it is a nice balance. It is a nice crutch. It's been a very, very great crutch for me at times. Connie Gardner is clearly able to run further than most people can. But that's not entirely what's so inspiring about her. It's that she believes that anyone can do this if they put their mind to it. In 2024, Connie Gardner is still running shorter races, including the Boston Marathon each year, coaching cross-country teams, and living in Akron, Ohio. She has been working on a book for many years that will probably be titled my Kind of Stupid, covering her crazy experiences as a Hall of Fame ultra runner that is unbelievable to most people. Congratulations to Connie Gardner for being inducted into the American Ultra Running Hall of Fame. Do it for your country, do it for your name, cause there's gonna be a day. With that, this is Davy Crockett, and this is the Ultra Running History Podcast. 
I hope you run fast and far, enjoy life, get outdoors, and most of all, stay safe and don't take unnecessary chances. <laughs>